Here comes the rain again, falling on my head like a memory, falling on my head like a new emotion. I want to walk in the open wind. I want to talk like lovers do. Want to dive into your ocean. Is it raining with you? So baby, talk to me, Shua. Shua, Shua, like lovers do. Talk to me, Shua, 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 like lovers do. And that's the end of that bullshit. That was the Eurythmics from 1984. On this bullshit. You kn- are you on? Uh, I think I am yeah, now. <laughs> what a fuck up. Twat. At first I started with pressing the outro button and instead of the intro button, then I had you on mute. <laughs> and I sang the song. I knew the song. Yeah, you sang the song. Do you want to do it again? We'll do the next bit. Oh, okay. We'll do the next bit. Well, I'll be fair. You can That way you can have a turn of singing. So oh, it goes thanks, like this. Oh, thanks, G, because people need to hear my singing. Oh, well, they need to voice. hear mine as well, so fuck them. So it goes like, here comes the rain again. Raining in my head like a tragedy, tearing me apart like a new emotion. Ooh, I want to breathe in the open wind. I want to kiss like lovers do. Want to dive into your ocean. Is it raining with you? So, baby, talk to me, Shua, 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 like lovers do. That's it. Yep, I, that, I'll believe it at well, that. Well, look, on the upside, you won't cop a dirty phone call saying, fuck you, butchered that one, <laughs> didn't you? Because <laughs> yeah, I upset you with... Uh, Phil Collins. Yeah, because you're a big Phil Collins fan. That's yes. what you told me. Yes. And I butcher I butcher everything. But I know, I, but that one was an abattoir. I, that was an abattoir of butchering. I destroyed with Fantastic Phil. Um, what was it? Uh, Last Easy week's. Lover. Easy, Easy lover. lover. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. She's an easy lover. <laughs> Let's introduce this bullshit podcast. This is Invert the Y. Episode start out log, Captain's Log 12.1.5.9 in the USS Invert the Y's orbiting another planet of Richard and bullshit. And today, I got him back, Rocket Russell. <laughs> and it's been amateur hour because we were talking about coffee. He's bought over... What is it called? Killer Coffee. The Killer Coffee Co. Well, Kill- we should do an advert for them. Well, let's do it. Hey kids, you want to have some decent coffee instead of Nespresso? If you've got an espresso machine, you can try out Killer Coffee. That's right, Killer Coffee is compatible with Nespresso machines and you can order it online. What's the website, Rocket Ro- Ro- Russell? Do you uh, know? Killercoffeeco.com.au We're not sponsored by Killer Coffee, I repeat. We're not sponsored by Killer Coffee. No, no we're one. just fueled by Killer Coffee. We're fucking well fueled by Killer <laughs> Coffee. I've had about six of them today. Fantastic coffee. i got to say, check it out now. We're not sponsored by Killer Coffee. Trust me. But it's great coffee. It is a great coffee. It's 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 one of my favourites so far. Yeah, and you were saying there was one like a look, like a Bailey's? Oh, yeah. I, I bought a Bailey's one, which was actually really surprisingly nice. But yeah. I like Bailey's. I'm, I'm, yeah, and I was saying to you, I don't really... I never... It, when I was... Because I don't drink now. You know that, right? Yes. So... When um, I was drinking, I never liked the cure at all. But the only thing I would drink that was kind of similar was uh, Kahlua. Yep. Kahlua and milk. And you were saying, oh, I used to like that too, and I didn't give a shit if people laughed at me. We were the same. I can remember one instance when a mate of mine came, from, came up from Melbourne to visit, and we went out to some like nightclub place. And he had way too many drinks. And then somehow we got talking about how we all like Kalura milk. And he went, yeah, so do I. I'm not ashamed of it. Fuck it. I know it's a girl's milk. Don't give a shit. A girl's drink. I don't give a shit. He bought a jug of it. Right? I'm in a jug. I'm being serious. Like a, a jug. And it was me, Pedro. Shout out to Pedro. And, and this other guy. And uh, we were sitting around at a table with a jug of Kalura milk. And... People weren't even really coming up to us. No one really cared. But he thought that everyone was looking at us. So he kept saying, I don't give a shit if you think this is a poof drink. Don't give a shit. It's awesome. Kalura milk. <laughs> right? And it's in a big jar. And I um, thought there's anything wrong with being that way. No, it's, it, look, it's, I, I think it's like religion. 
I don't care what you do, just don't preach it to me. Yeah, exactly right. Don't don't ram it down my throat. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's like a vegan. How do you know a vegan's a vegan? Because <laughs> I can't say because I've got to edit it. So what is... <laughs> No, how do you know a vegan's no, a vegan? No, I don't know. Don't fucking worry. They'll fucking tell you, yeah, mate. They oh, will. fuck will they, they will. tell you? They will. You know, <laughs> but you know the weapon, shout out to him, he'll say they're the sickest people on the planet. Because not all, not, a, not all vegans, but a lot of them, they do it without substituting what they're lacking with their diet. Vitamins and all yeah, that kind of so stuff. Yeah, so they actually are quite sick people. And so he gets, he well, gets. So this is why I'm a happy carnivore because I'm eat, I'm helping vegans out. Yeah. Because my cows eat their stuff, so I'm yeah. getting rid of the cows so they've got more of their stuff. But he gets the shits. He gets like this little fucking vein on the side of his head that starts like bulging. Because if he finds out if someone's a vegan, he'll say, "Why are you vegan?" And if they say, "Oh, it's for ethical, like for health reasons," he goes, "Are you fucking serious?" Have you considered this and you're substituting that and you don't have this in your diet anymore and this and that? But he can't handle it. But if, if they say that it's for ethical reasons, like I don't want to hurt anything, he can live with it. He can live with it. But if they're like, oh, no, well, because I think it's a healthier lifestyle and he just goes, well, you don't, you don't know what you're fucking doing. You just don't, right? And, and then he'll say, have you substituted this, that, that? Oh, no, I never really thought about it. The fucking vein... Oh, I've met one worse than a vegan, and that was a fruitarian. Oh, yeah, I've heard of them. And all he ate was mandarins. Mandarins and water. Well, and how the fuck is... He yeah, was, that was Steve Jobs, too. Was he, was, he was a fruitarian. All he would eat was fruit. Yeah. That's, no, well, this guy was, serious. that's what he... That's this what guy he, was only oranges. And it'd be weird, you'd be sitting at dinner, cutting your steak, watching him peel oranges, and you're like, that just, just <laughs> doesn't make sense. And... <laughs> Ultimately, he's, he wanted to be a waterarian. So, ultimately, and he had a two-year goal of being on pure water. And that yeah, was it. Let's, see like, how, let's see how you go with all that. All right, well, we won't see you on your next visit. Yeah, nice to know you do. Let's see how you go. Yeah. I mean, I think, we, uh, I think I heard somewhere along the line that you can live without eating for about three weeks. Because we all eat too much. Yeah. We all do. So, you can live without eating anything at all for three weeks as long as you don't do anything strenuous and this and that. But you can actually survive for that long. After that, you're fucked, pretty much. Why would you want to? And water's not going to cut it. Water's not going to cut it. No. You're going you're gonna to shut down pretty quick. And you can actually be overhydrated too, by the way. Mm. So if Yeah, you're not, that's the funny part. Yeah, that's the funny part. If you don't actually take in any like minerals like salt or anything like that, you'll, you'll find out how pretty, pretty quickly how things will go very... Oh, yeah. Downhill. I don't understand it, but... No. Each to their own. Each to their own. And it's Again, not, as long as you're not preaching it on me, I don't I'm not preaching. I don't what preach. the fuck do you do outside? I don't preach. Room? I don't mm. preach. I only preach certain things. F1. And that's the topic of the show, right? Oh, Russell. did I guess it? Yeah, you did. Well, you know what? We, we made ourselves... We can make ourselves have a very difficult afternoon by going on about... It's conspiracy theories and UFOs and abductions and fucking the rabbit hole that that oh. that, that, that exists with all that shit. Or we can just go something very easy and talk about the upcoming 2020 Formula One season, which is what when's it start? March. It's March fifteenth. So okay, so we're about a month. We're about a month. Out. A so we're 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 the weekend before the, the big weeks. So yeah. next two weeks in F one, uh, we've got liveries and cars in the next. Four days, yeah, and then next weekend we've got our first testing. Yeah, so you know it's a bit, it's a bit unfortunate that we're not recording maybe a week or two in the future, but we can revisit it. Well, we'll revisit it. We'll do a preseason. Yeah, we'll do a preseason thing. Preseason wrap up yeah. after testing wrap up. But we want to do a quick chat before yeah. the season yeah. to see, you know, with all the rumors and speculation. Yeah, yeah there's some crazy shit going on even without a season being being oh, it's around. Been a bru- it has actually been a good off season. I like it. Yeah, it's again. I I'm, I'm it, excited. I'm, you know, I'm pumped for a couple of weeks. But you know so. what? I'm, I'm, I like this time of year when the new cars come out. So at the time of this recording, only Haas has revealed their car, haven't they? They've only re- they've revealed the livery. That's all they do these days, but Yeah. Do you remember in the old days they'd actually show the new car? Now they don't do that. All they no. do is show like last year's car, but with well, the new Ferrari livery. Ferrari and Mercedes are meant to be the re- launching the new cars with the new liveries. Uh, Williams, Haas... Uh, Toro uh, Alpha now. Uh, Alpha. Alpha Sin, not Alpha Centauri. <laughs> <laughs> Alpha Toro, whatever it is. Tor- the new Alpha. Toro Rosso. Oh, fuck, who cares? They're doing that. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, my favourite two, and they're the teams I don't follow, 
is Red Bull and Apple, whatever they're calling themselves this year, Toro Rosso. They always have the prettiest looking cars. They have the best, yeah. like, testing paint jobs. Like yeah. the camo Red Bull yeah. one last year. Sick. Awesome. Sick. Sick. Yeah. And then they go back to normal one. Yeah, know. why do they do that? I'm, I don't, I'm I guessing get, it's branding. I think it's branding and, yeah, it's got to be. Red Bull, con- apparently, being a big V8 supercar fan, um, Red Bull sponsors one of the big teams in V8 supercars and they were talking about the retro rounds in V8 supercars and yep. how certain brands are really, really good and they'll really work with you to do the retro stuff. Apparently, Red Bull, that's our logo and you fucking use it. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a bit of a shame because uh, some of those testing, I think the reason why they do it though is it, is to hide some of their aerodynamic bits. You know how they mm. used to completely check a board? Yeah, the they car, do the camo and the, the camo one. one. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, so at the time of this recording, only Haas has been revealed. And they've gone back to the silver black livery. Yeah, it's not a... Which is the standard it's, Haas. It's, it's okay, man. It's the standard Haas. And it'll look like the Mercedes. Yeah. And you'll have to look twice. You know what the tragedy is? They probably need a major sponsor to work with. Like, uh, what was it? Energy. Rich energy. Rich energy. But they got burnt so badly by that complete phony. He was a phony and that, oh. that product's pretty much phony as well. And they're probably unlikely to ever go back because Gene Haas, up until that point, was like, well, I don't need any sponsorship or branding on my car because I am the branding. Yes. Haas Engineering and Haas Tools is what I want to promote. I don't want anyone else to take that away from the valuable real estate on my car. He was quoted as saying that. And so now the, the one time they actually got a title sponsor, which was Rich Energy, like I said, they were phony. There was all sorts of issues with them, and they got rid of them at, at the end of the season. They're about well, it wasn't at the end of the season. It was what three quarters of the way through. Yeah, it was, but they kept the black and gold. I think they, they, I think that's an FIA thing. Yeah, isn't they it? kept the black and gold, but the actual logo and the rich energy branding was gone from the car. Um, and then uh, this year they've got nothing at all. They're just Haas again with their, I guess, their original livery kind of colours. Yep. Um, I don't have a problem with it. You know what? I love liveries. Oh. And I actually wanted to talk to you at some point about the best liveries in F1. Because you know where I'm going to go. Well, we've already discussed this many times. The best liveries was the old Lotuses oh, with yeah. the, black the, the black and gold. Black and gold JPS. Yeah, the Such Johnny, a simple... The play, John Players. John Players special. Such a yeah. simple livery, but yeah. such a pretty car. Yeah. And such a pretty paint job. Do you know what my favorite, one of my favorite liveries was? The old Williams, Rothmans, Williams, oh, Renault. They were gorgeous. I, and that was across, I mean, it wasn't just on the Formula One car. You had it on the Porsche, the Rothmans Porsche, the same, yeah, the same yeah, livery. Yeah. It was across, it's like the golf I think livery, it was, you yeah. know. There's, I, it's, it was across everything. Yeah, I think it was the Rothmans branding. Yep. But I loved it. Oh. I, I just thought the blue. Well, that was the, the FW14 and all that, wasn't 14, it? 14, 15, 16, 16 and 17, the 18. and the 18. And then they, I think it was 1998, they dropped Rothmans and they went to Winfield. Yep, and that was uh, horrible. And that was horrible. That was a red car. Yep. And, and then you got to go, if you're looking at those, you're looking at um, Buzzing Hornets. Loved the Buzzing oh, Hornets yeah. on the side of the Jordans. The Jordans, yes. yeah. Well, that was Benson and Hedges. Hedges. Yes. And that was towards the end of the cigarette yeah. advertising. So that's, they started, you know, wordplay and that's Buzzing right. Hornets. That's right, Buzz, Buzzing Hornets. Buzzing that's right. Hornets. Yeah, that was great. I love that. And um, it, the Ferraris, I've always loved the Ferraris, but I really disliked last year's... Uh, what do you call it? Matt Ferrari, red yeah. Ferrari. I, I like the scarlet. They're all going Fer- Matt because it, it pops better on TV. Apparently. I, I disagree. I don't know who, what fucking TV they're looking at. But Some highly educated, highly I paid don't, fucking I universe. I just don't guy. agree with that because, like, the scarlet Ferraris of like the late nineties, early two thousands, early two thousands, really popped on TV and they looked dramatic. Like they used to have the blood red Ferraris. Yep. Like of the right up until nineteen ninety seven. They had that blood red Ferrari, and then they and went then to they, and that, Ferrari, then they, Scuderia Red. That, that's right. The, the, the which was the Schumacher Red? Yeah, the Schumacher Red. That that red was controversial because some people didn't like the change at all, and that but that red looked awesome on TV. And then last year they had that fucking matte red, and it looked shit. Looked dirty on TV. I don't know who thinks that's better on TV. I don't know who. I don't know. I don't you know, know, they need a, they need someone to calibrate their I, TV. I, I think it's funny how cigarette. Branding is illegal or banned. Oh man! But you still got your mission minion. You know what? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it now. I'm gonna be controversial here. I'm gonna call it. How is cigarette advertising banned when fucking gambling advertising is at a record saturated level? 
Uh, and you can't tell me that gambling doesn't harm families just as much as cigarettes did. If not more. If not more. I mean, cigarette right? only takes out one of you. Gambling, you know. That's what. But that's what I mean. Like, okay, you gambling and cigarettes come at a at a cost, right? Potentially. Mm-hmm. And and the big thing with cigarettes was was health. Okay, you got rid of it. Okay, fine. But you allow gambling to be advertised at seven o'clock at night, at least here in Australia, seven o'clock at night, prime time, at least on cable networks you do. And if you were to put uh, an, a, a gambling, like a Ladbrokes or something like that, on the side of a Formula One car, no one would question it. But I think that's bullshit. Yeah, because they've got the they've got the little um, star next to it with yeah. the gambling. If you do have a problem with gambling, yeah. line underneath it. Yeah, I think you should get rid of it. Apparently, man. like I'm not a big gambler. I, I don't either. I don't even have any of the apps installed on my phone. I have some friends who are very big gamblers, and apparently Australia is one of the highest gambling countries in the world. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but apparently we're one of the only countries in the world that has gambling apps. Apparently, the rest of the world is only just getting into this. Yeah, but you know why? Because we were one of the first countries in the world that actually legalize gambling from a government agency. Yep. So the the totalize eight the totalizator agency board, the TAB, was a government run controlled agency where the government said, All right, well you want to gamble, you're gonna do it via this method, right? And this outlet. And we're gonna control it. Right. And many countries around the world didn't allow that. And still don't. Right? For good cause. For good for exactly right, because it's just as harmful as as cigarettes. But we, we banned cigarettes so quickly and we controlled the advertising of cigarettes so quickly that it, it makes me kind of shake my head like, hang on, you do it for that, but you don't do it for gambling. Why? Isn't gambling just as harmful? But maybe because it doesn't impact your health. I'd argue that it does. Mentally, it does. Mentally, it does. Um, so, you know, I, could, I, I, I really don't like how we've gone down that road. I don't like it. But I miss the old cigarette advertising. Yes. I really do. I'd love to, and see. I think Formula One misses it too. Oh, the money that they, they miss they bump it. Into Fucking oath, they do. Right. I mean, and and you look at it. Marlboro still owns yep. the outside of Ferrari. Yep. Yep. They so, do. Yeah. They they get a they get around it somehow. Well, they that, just change. Remember, they the, for a few years they ran the barcode. So if you scan right. that barcode, it was actually Ring the barcode ding, for baby. Marlboro. Yes, right. They ran the barcode. For and now Mission Minion is Marlboro. Is it, Marlboro? It is. Yeah. It's it's some anti smoking thing within Marlboro. It's yeah. like it's hilarious. It is. But um, it's um, I, we talked about this once before about gambling and advertising and promotions and all that sort of stuff and how I'm surprised certain companies like um, Pepsi, for example, aren't really present on cars. Coca Cola is to a certain extent on McLaren, but you know, if you blink, you'd miss it. If you blink, you'd miss it. But classic liveries like the McLaren MP4, you know, with the the red and white Marlboro basically moving cigarette packages that they were. They looked awesome. They looked fucking awesome. The McLaren Honda, Ayrton Senna and, uh, um, and Prost. I love those cars. They looked amazing. I love the the you know, late 90s Williamses, yep. the Rothmans ones. The Rothmans ones. Uh, the, I thought the Jordans of the mid-90s looked amazing <sighs> too. The the really bright yellow Benson and Hesches. And it stood out. That's yeah. the biggest problem I find yeah. now. Like, so this year, my biggest problem will be trying to work out which one's the Haas and which one's the Mercedes. Yeah, because they look very similar. They look very similar. You know what? I can't, I think the FIA. I, I'm amazed they don't step in and go, "Listen, guys, you look too close on TV. You look too similar. You can't both be fucking silver." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. on a TV where predominantly the nose, the front nose cone of the car is what you see the most, and then the driver's helmet. Well, now the actual a halo. halo. If that's silver, well, a layman will see that as a as a Mercedes potentially. You know what I mean? So why is, they should say, listen, guys, only one car be, can be silver, only one car can be red, only one car can be green. Yep. Right? I used to like the Benettons as well. The yeah, old Benettons. The, the Benettons. With the assorted colours on yep. them. And I'll t- remember Footwork? Footwork had some the nice fo- ones. Yeah, they had like the paintball scheme all over their cars. They looked unreal. Yeah, Benetton always had. Do you remember the um, uh, BAR Honda? How it used to have the lucky the strike, the two, the two, two on each. Yeah, oh, that, that was, was brilliant. That was because they couldn't decide which one to promote. Yes. So they they said, you know what, we can't flip a coin and make a decision. We'll go half and half. They looked awesome. They looked. They brilliant. looked awesome. One was lucky strike, and one was triple five, wasn't it? Correct. Yeah, that was the first year of the BAR Hondas. 
with Jacques Villeneuve driving the car. Correct. I think that was in 1998. Seven? Eight, eight, no, it was nine, nine. Because 19, 1997, Jacques Villeneuve was in the Williams. Ah, he yes. was in the Williams in 1998. Then 1999, he went to the BAA yeah. Honda with his mate. Uh, what was his mate? Craig. He was, uh, he was his manager. His oh. manager became a team owner. And I can't remember his name. No. Nah. God. But that was the big reason why Jacques Villeneuve left Williams because his manager became a team owner and then they became... Well, that's what I mean. B.A.R. Honda. Honda. You, you hear that all the time. Like, um, that was one of Ricardo's big problems, wasn't it? Mm. When he left Red Bull was because they were pulling his his team engineer and making him an internal guy, not I an external guy. I think there's guy. more to that. Really oh, there was more to that, think, but that I was think, one of the reasons. I think there's more to that. I, I think Ricardo left for lots of other reasons, which we can all... Speculate. Clearly see... And speculate, but I think we can clearly agree that I think part of it was Verstappen. I really do feel that. Who, at the time of this podcast, has extended his yeah. contract with Red Bull to 2024. 2024, yeah. So do you want to go down step by step, team by team, like we did at the end of the season where we graded them and maybe think about what we think they might end up on, just to speculate? Yeah, why not? Let's right. do it. We haven't se- so at the time of this recording, um, I think tomorrow they're going to release the Renault. No, tomorrow's Ferrari. Well, sorry, Tomor- Tuesday our time. Yep. Uh, with time zones and all that. So Tuesday's the first one will be Ferrari. Yep. Um, And then we've got everybody else. Then, I think everyone else this week, isn't it? So by the everyone, end of the week. Well, by the end of the week, everyone will be out because uh, Friday's first day of testing. That's right, yeah. So everybody's coming out. I think um, Alpha... Tora, whatever they got. No, a Alpha Centauri. Alpha, let's let's go with Alpha Centauri. It's not, Alpha, it's not Alpha Centauri, but I'm going to call them Alpha no, Centauri. It's, what is it? Tora, Tora Alpha or something. Uh, Alpha Tor, Tori. Which is their new clothing brand that they're releasing. Yeah, apparently they felt that they were promoting Red Bull too much and they had an p- opportunity to promote another product that they've got. So, yeah, it's a clothing. Which is their clothing Their clothing brand. Brand. So department. they're promoting that. Yeah. Um, I think they're releasing Testing Morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think them and Williams are both releasing testing morning. So yeah. although testing morning, I think Williams is only releasing a livery, so I don't know what's happening with I that. I think one. that again they're only releasing liveries, but the actual physical car. See, like I said before, back in the old days they'd actually show you the, the brand car. new car, yep. right? Plus the livery. Now they just show you the livery on the old car and the new car makes its appearance on the track. Yeah, and they've so some them, like last year. Look at um, Mercedes had some bits. Yeah. from the new car. Yeah, on the old car. Yeah, with the new livery, which yeah. was pretty much the old yeah. livery. So I know car. it pisses off, my, like uh, I guess creators like Autosport who used to actually get the new car, draw lines over the aerodynamic bits, and say, "Oh, it's interesting that they moved the wheelbase." a bit more longer this this year and you know they've got they've done this with a diffuser and they've done this with a wing but then they'll turn around and go well it's all pointless because we know half of this is last year's car yep. and this isn't the stuff they're going to bring to the track for testing let alone Australia so by the time the car comes to Australia that's the real car folks yes. right so even at testing they reckon half of it's old car plus new bits they want to test to bolt onto the car for Australia to be really secretive which it's just, again, goes back to the problem of not having enough test days because if you had more test days, you wouldn't do as many silly things like that. But Well, you wouldn't do what, I mean, Mercedes did last year, Ferrari's talking about doing this year, which is the two cars. Yeah. You know, two different cars for two the two different test things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Or you wouldn't have things like... Uh, and how much money does that cost? I think... They're talking about cost by... Cost I, I think it costs more. How much money does it cost to design two cars? It's got to be more. It's got to be more. Just like it was more to have an engine last four race weekends as opposed to blowing up whenever it felt like it, right? Having And, and you know what else they're doing? These bigger uh, manufacturers are buying littler teams and putting all their unproven shit on that car to see if it works so they can put it on their works team. So you know that Ferrari could put stuff on Alfa Romeo, see if it works, and then put it back on the Ferrari. Because you know Alfa Romeo are just there to be a feeder team. Just like Williams now, unfortunately, is a feeder team to Mercedes in a lot of ways. It's a bit of, it's a, bit of a shame, but it is what it is. But going team, team by team, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I am looking forward to this season because I love F1 
and I just want to see cars race again. But I'm really looking forward to 2021. Yes, because this year I'm more excited this for this year than I thought I'd be after yeah. after the debacle that was last year. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm a bit less excited than you, man, because oh. I just think this year's going to be more of the same because there's no changes in regulation. The cars are exactly the same. So we're walking into the season pretty much, I'm assuming, unless things change radically different, everything will be the same as last year. Yep. So even, down to the, even down to the tyres, because the teams yeah. rejected the tyre yeah, changes. They re- didn't they? Yes, they did. They rejected the tyres. So everything is literally so- the same. So every team has come out and said now, this their car they're releasing for 2020 is an evolution of last year's car, mm. not a revolution. Yep. The revolution will be next year because the regulations state that the car's got to be totally different. And so you're going to see major shakeups and, and revolutions in the, in the car design. So this year, I think it's going to be more driver driven. And what I mean by that is, is that the individual drivers will really dictate the performance yeah, of each team. Yep. And the driver market, when the silly season starts in terms of driver movement, oh, is going to be fascinating this This is year. actually going to be one of the best yeah. silly seasons yeah. in a long time. Yeah. I mean, we've got two of the big boys already locked out. Yeah. So we know Leclerc signed up 2024. Yeah, he has, yeah. Max Verstappen signed up 2024. Yeah, those two guys have sold their soul. So they're gone. Yep. yep, That's them gone. So that leaves one seat in both of those cars. Now, who will take that seat in well, those two cars is the is the big, the multi-million do, dollar question. Do you agree that Vettel is gone? Oh, he can't. Had a Ferrari. He's gone. Even if he has a good year, I yeah. don't see him being there I, next year. I think the same. I think if Fer- if he drives the wheels off the Ferrari this year, short of getting them a, a, a championship, he's gone. I don't see how he can stay. You know what? Even with a championship, I think he's gone. I, I think the telling tale was when they char- signed up Mr. Leclerc to ding, ding, the baby. five years. Yeah. You know, hang on. Their contracts both expired at the same time, which was the end of this year. They've already signed Leclerc for five years. Yeah. What's happened to Seb? Seb's uh, just sitting on the sidelines, man. And, the, and Helmet, Dr. Helmet, has come out during the week saying, oh, yes, Seb has approached us wanting to see if there was a seat for 2021, which we've said no. I couldn't get Dr. Helmet on the on the phone today. You don't want Dr. Helmet today. No, probably not. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard he's not in a good state. I heard he's not feeling too good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wasn't available for interview today, no. but maybe later on in the season I can get... Dr. Helmut Marco back on the phone, but I can't I, right now. I hope he keeps the one accent this time. Yeah, I said so why he keeps changing accents, which yeah. puts me off. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the the thing is, is that, yeah, Seb, I think, has gone, and with him going opens the floodgates. I sent you an interview, um, a, a YouTube video a couple of weeks ago about a, a guy who's got a couple of theories about where drivers are going to move to. One of them gets me so excited. One of them... I actually, th- I actually think he's really correct. I actually think the big, the big mover and shaker is going to be, at least from my perspective, Daniel Ricciardo, and I don't think he's going to go to Ferrari either. I think I think he'll go to McLaren. So do I. Yeah. I, look, uh, being a Ferrari fan and an Aussie, I would, would, to go. would give me the biggest Woody yep. ever if I got to wear a red with Daniel's numbers and yep. name on it. Yep. Oh. God. It'd be it'd be awesome. And it'd almost be as good as seeing him in a Williams. Yeah, it, yeah, but you wouldn't wish that on him. No, you wouldn't. Wish you know that his on career's him. gone to shit if he's ended up in a Williams. Um, I think it's likely that he'll go to McLaren only because he was linked to to McLaren before and he rejected it. He apparently was offered a lot of money to go there, and Renault offered him even more. But I think that Renault. Um, I know I'm jumping, jumping the gun, but Renault, I think, won't, won't, won't do shit this year again. You I know, think that from everything I've heard, they're banking on 2021. They keep saying that, but what they're... I, just today, at the time of this recording, Cyril Beatball came out and said, we're going to have a really hard time this year balancing our performance for 2020 and our title challenge for 2021. And what really puts me off with Renault is, is that we know that their chief chassis designer just left. Just left. And this new guy who came in, I don't know, I can't remember his name, has just come in literally into the team. And so we know that... They've he, had him on call for a couple of years, but haven't they? Because he was yeah, on yeah, gardening yeah. leave he because, was on, his, because of his yeah. contract with the previous team. He was yeah, with. but at the, at the end of the day, the guy has not designed this year's car. No. Right? So he's going to inherit this year's sh- this chassis that this other guy's developed. And I've got no confidence in it because he designed last year's car and it was shit, right? So I think Renault will be the same. And all the and also on top of that too, 
their aerodynamic part department over the winter break got a massive shake up, and a lot of their you their aerodynamics team got let go, and new people got put in. So what I'm saying is, this year's car that they're about to launch is going to be designed by, pe- by people that are gone. Yeah, they were right? there last year. Yeah, so these new people might be awesome, but they they got no chance of getting this car to be productive unless they design a B spec car. But they're going to inherit a shit car. They're going to inherit a shit car. You're not going to really want to invest in a B-spec car for a couple of months. I don't think so. Uh, especially with 2021 around. No. It's so close now. No. You know, I think I think a lot of teams would have built at least their 2021 car by now and be def- refining it yeah. or at least have it well and truly down yeah. the design path. Yeah. I, I just think that um, Renault, I think, are going to be stuck in the midfield, midfield again, yep. floundering which puts more pressure on the team to justify their existence with a board. I hear the board are satisfied now that the board are, d- d- you know, pr- giving more funding to the team. They want to be part of Formula One. They've committed to it. But I'm suspicious. I think they're a, what do you call it, a uh, fair weather team. If things don't go their way, they'll pull out. That's how I feel with it. Yep. So I know I've jumped the gun to Renault, but I just feel Renault – are a very important team to watch this year because Daniel's going to be important to watch because he's not playing, I don't think, for his future at Renault. He's playing for his future, future somewhere Renault. else. Yeah, right? If he goes to Ren- Renault next year, he's... I, Unless Renault prove us wrong and Renault are fucking awesome this year, then I'll say, you know what, maybe he should stay there. But I'm telling you, if Renault is still struggling this year like they did last year, that he's got to get out of there because you don't just suddenly become flounderers one year and then title winners the next. You've got to show performance improvement, even yep. with regulation change. So I don't believe what Cyril Abipo is saying. I, there's so many examples of previous years and previous teams and previous regulation changes that prove otherwise, where a team has shown big performance games gains the year before they win the fucking title, irrespective of regulation change. Yep. And Renault have to do it this year. If they don't do it this year... Forget about 2021, man. And so I think Renault and Daniel Ricciardo are probably going to be very interesting to watch. And I really do think he's going to go to McLaren. Because I do think the other thing that the guy in that video said, Tommy said, was that Carlos Sainz Sainz could end up at Ferrari. I actually think that's going to happen. I don't know. See, I'm sus on that one because he's not a Ferrari academy. Mm. You know, we've got... Um, what's his name? Alfa Romeo, Giovanni. Uh, Giovanazzi. Giovanazzi. He's yeah, a Ferrari he Academy is, driver. He, he is. is taking up. So, I mean, it's not official, but there are two seats at Alfa. There is Alfa's seat, and then there's who Ferrari wants in the other seat. So, at the moment, Kimi's got the Alfa seat, and Giovanazzi is in the Ferrari seat. So, he's got to be the next logical you know what? Again, progression up. Again, it all depends on this year. I don't think, I really don't think... Ferrari are totally sold on Giovinazzi. No. I think I think Ferrari are holding him hostage and potentially willing to offload him to some other team if the if the the money's right, if the price is right. Well, I don't I think, think it depends on so I mean a lot of things were thrown into specula not speculation. A lot of things were thrown out of whack. Cause so your supercar license points are cleared, was it every three years? Yeah, because uh, Seb served twenty something points. Didn't he have a huge amount of points? Yeah. On his license, which he has to live with this year. Yeah, so every I think it's every three years your points get reset. So you've got to reset those points, and you I think you, the points is what license you can hold. Yeah. Um. So a person in F two who will be in F one someday. Greeting, Starfire. <laughs> Just, it's your phone, is it? Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, yeah, you got the last Starfighter. Oh, it's the last Starfighter. Yes. That's sick. Go away from me. You'll have, um, you have to tell me how you got that. Zedge. Oh, oh, yeah, I've got that. Yeah, yeah. Is that on there? Is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, fucking sick. Yes. Um, um, Somebody in F2 whose license points were cleared this year, so he's going to have to race F2 next year to get his points back. Oh, okay. I, we all know who that is. Yeah, that's uh, Ralph. Oh, not Ralph. That's uh, Mikey. Mikey. Fuck off. Mike, Mike Schumacher. You know what? Talk about F2 for two seconds. Uh, I didn't realise that Ralph Schumacher's son, David Schumacher. Just got promoted up to F3. He got up to three, yeah. So they reckon he's a, he's a potential fu- uh, future F1 uh, driver. I don't think Mick Schumacher's anywhere near being in Formula 1, man. 
I think he's a year out. I think he's at least two years out. I think that, uh, you know what, a guy like Giovinazzi, if he gets dropped by Ferrari, he's going to open the door for Mick. Yes. Right? So if... I think he's at the moment, he's in that position of, I'm waiting on to see what other people do. Not willingly. I, I, think, I think he's the team he's signed to is waiting I think to see that, what other I people do. I think Ferrari, the academy, are looking at guys like Giovinazzi and saying, okay, man, you've been in Formula One now for a while. You've not really set the world on fire, Right? If you can do better this year, then you can stay at Alfa Romeo for a bit longer. Because I don't see him replacing Vettel. I just don't see it, right? And if he st- if he stays at um at at Ferrari, then he's okay, fine. But then I actually think he might be offloaded, and and Mick Schumacher will go to Alfa. I think he'll be offloaded, and Mick will go to Alfa. That's what I think too. Yeah, I think he'll serve his year in Alfa. Um, I, I think it also depends on what happens with the driver market this year. Because I mean, they've got to fill the second seat. Yeah. And you don't want someone too strong in there because you've now signed Charles to the five-year deal. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, And Mick, I don't think Mick can take the pressure. And you know what else with Mick? He had he didn't set the world on fire in uh, in GP2. He did the first year, not this year. No. First year he set the world on fire. Everyone was, you know, he got a couple yeah, of wins. but he didn't this year. He didn't this year. No. I think, that took, I think that's taken him back at least a year in F1. Yeah, and the license reset didn't and help. The, yeah, exactly. The so he, he's looking for another probably year or two years before he's in F1. Um, and I'll tell you what, he's got big shoes to fill. The oh. pressure would be huge on him. I mean, but in saying that, he has been given F1 cars to drive. But his uh, cousin, David Schumacher, son of Ralph Schumacher, might actually be better off because there won't be as much pressure because yeah. he's the son of Ralph. And Ralph was kind of like the... Oh, yeah, he's the all Clayton's, right. he's Clayton's like, Schumacher. He's all right, but he's not a Schumacher, you know what I mean? So um, it'll be interesting. But, yeah, for going back to... We'll, we'll go step by step. Mercedes, I think they'll dominate again. Yes. No change, at the, no change of the guard. Vettel, I don't see anyone knocking Vettel off this year unless... I'm sorry, uh, Hamilton... Have see you seen any of his posts? Yeah, he, mate, he's looking like a beast. He's looking fucking me. He's mate. lost seven kilos. He's he reckons he's lost, uh, what did he say? He he's went down in, to 73. So he, he, was, he went into last, started last year at 78. Yep. This year he's already at 73. He's lost seven kilos, but not, he's put that, lost that in fat that he didn't have. Yeah. And he's put that into more muscle that he already had. So, yeah, sorry, not Vettel, bloody Hamilton. He looks unfucking stoppable he already. Looks like a machine. If the car's going to be good, and it should, the only person that can probably beat him is Bottas. And I'm going to tell you something now. This I is, don't see Bottas. Beating this is him. Bottas last year. Last year at Mercedes. Oh, for sure. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah, he's gone. We all know who's going there next year. Yeah. And I'm doing the happy dance. Who, who, who do you think, Georgie? Georgie's going to get. Yeah, promoted, George. Bro. You know what? I think Georgie might. He's done his job. Yeah, he has. He. He's, you know, do you look at the testing he did? He did um, the Pirelli tyre test yeah. in the Mercedes. And you know what? Mercedes. And was quicker than everybody else. Was yep. quicker than the laps Bottas pre, set pre, yeah. before he got in. Yeah. Look, He's, Bottas has been fine, but he hasn't done what I think Mercedes want, wanted him to do. He hasn't been a good number two. He hasn't been a good number two. He has in one respect. He hasn't rocked a boat. And he but hasn't it, crashed in. He didn't crash uh, in. He hasn't done many mistakes. He did, uh, oh, what track was it where he put it in the wall and they were pissed off with him he, yeah w- the problem is he hasn't done he hasn't pushed hamilton hard enough no that's the problem right and so a guy like uh georgie might actually push him a little bit harder but then again he might not because he might be intimidated by him you don't know right george russell might actually just play the good number two for a year and see how it goes but i think mercedes at the end of the day Hamilton, sorry, not Vettel. Hamilton, yep, will will dominate again. I think Bottas will play second fiddle with the occasional glimpse of Bottas three point oh, Bottas Bottas three point oh, get get the occasional win. Ferrari, Vettel's fucking gone. I don't care. He might have a better year this year, and the car might be better, but he's not. He's the damage is done because he's had he's been there since twenty fifteen. Yes, right. And Ferrari have produced at least, in that time, at least three good cars that were able to win championships, and he fucked it. Yep. And I don't know how he's still there. And you heard the rumour that he went back to... Uh, Helmut Marco. Dr. Well, Helmut it's Marco. It's not a rumour. Helmut Marco has come out and said, yeah. yes, no, he was con- he contacted me about a drive for 2021, and, 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 and I told and, him to go away. Yeah, yeah. So you know he wants out. You know he doesn't want to be there anymore. Well, I don't think he's... 
he doesn't fit in with the modern day no. driver. You know, it, he doesn't have social media. He no. doesn't believe in all that stuff. He doesn't like networking. Whereas like you look me. at all these young guys, yeah. He's like me. I you look at all these young guys now. You look at Lando Norris. He's punching oh, out Le- the Instagram. Mate, Lando's, he's, he's Lando fucking and, hilarious. Lando and Instagram's gold. You know, you know, he, him and Carlos, Carlos Sainz Jr. on Instagram are fucking gold. They're so funny together. Yeah. But, but the whole lot, I mean, um, so you see Lando, Albon, Georgie, and all those boys, Giovinazzi, yeah. all having an absolute blast. I mean, that photo was at, um, on the plane last year where they were giving Giovinazzi shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was fucking gold. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what? They all, they're they all pretty tight because they all went through GB2, GB2 together. Yep. Um, but look, Vettel seems like, yeah, you, he, he's a of another another time, another era, and he's a dinosaur. He looks like a dinosaur, and I think he's done. And I don't think he's going to go to any other team. I think he'll walk away. I don't, I see, don't see a seat for him. No, I don't either. I don't. No. If Red Bulls turned him down, that would have been his biggest no. chance. Do you, know the, you know the rumour that Bottas might go to Renault? I've heard that one. I've also, heard heard, that? I've also heard that he might go to Williams. Back to his... Uh, uh, that could happen too, Back yeah. to where he started. Yeah. But uh, going back to, to Vettel, I think he's, he's done. I wouldn't be surprised if he sees these brand new cars for 2021 and goes, fuck this. I'm out. I'm, oh, out. I'm out. I'm done. Thank I've you. I've got my what, four, got world four, four world titles, and uh, yeah, people can say that I won it because I got the I had the best car, and it was a cheater's car, and I was cheating, and I was only good when I was at the front. <laughs> All the shit that was thrown at him, I still got four world titles, folks. See yep. you later. You know what? I've made my m- millions of bajillions. I'm out. You know what I mean? And so yeah, he'll e- exit stage left or right at some point. Um, Leclerc's the future. I think he'll be. I think he'll show up uh, Vettel big time this year again. Uh, yes, he will again. Yeah, he yeah. will. I mean, he he made mistakes last year, but he'll definitely rectify but see, that. But when you this watch year. him when he makes those mistakes, he's learnt from those yeah. mistakes. You mean the most fa- the biggest one you can think of is last year when him and um, Max had the yeah you know, when Max pushed him off the road. Yeah, he was being nice. Yeah, he and he said it afterwards. You know, in interviews, going. I now understand where the line is. Yeah. And I will now drive to that line. I thought the line was here. Yeah. Quite clearly, it's here. Yeah. So I can do that now. Yeah. And you watch, he has been a more of an aggressive driver. He's he has. learnt from his mistakes. He has. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with this year. I really do. Unless the car is terrible, but I don't see it being that way. And then you go to Red Bull, and I think Max Verstappen is going to be on fire this year. I, I, you know what? I actually think he's going to be a title contender. I fucking feel it in my bones. I, can't, I think Red Bull are going to produce a really great chassis again. There's no reason well, why they the wouldn't. Well, it's the second year with the, that motor. They know what they've got but now. Exactly right. But there's no reason why they can't. They've got the same team. They've got Adrian Newey still making that, you know, doing the aerodynamics for that car. Yep. And they've got that Honda engine. I'm telling you now, that Honda engine... I'm telling you now, McLaren must be looking at that Honda engine, going, "We fucking should ne- never have left that fucking engine. We should never. We should have kept it, because they would have had the works." So you know what? I'll tell you. There's someone that's laughing at McLaren right now. You want to know who's laughing at McLaren? Ron. Ron. Because Ron Dennis was the guy that got Honda in, and Ron Dennis was the guy that said, "You can't win a championship without a works manufacturer, and Honda are the only option we have." Right. And when they were going you know, shit, and, you know, oil was coming out the back of it and they had no power and Alonso was saying GP2 engine, right? It was Ron saying don't let don't let them go because we need a works manufacturer, right? And now that engine, they reckon, is only a little bit behind all the others and maybe it's right on par with like a Renault or something like this and that chassis you know is going to be good. And you know Verstappen, I hate the prick, but I'm telling you now, he's awesome. He's a good steerer. He knows how to steer a car. He knows how to steer a car. He's awesome. I can see them doing very well. And I think Albon, this is a big year for Albon because he had only a few races with Verstappen. Now he's got the whole season with him. Yep. Right? And I'll tell you, if he can survive a season with Verstappen, that's that's impressive. Because I fucking can't stand Dr. Helmut Marco's comment. I don't know if you saw this. He said that they would have come second in the Constructors' Championship if they still had Daniel Ricciardo with Verstappen. Did you fucking see that no, shit? I missed that one. So he came out and said that the car was was better than they actually uh, were on the actual scoreboard. 
And the only reason they came third in the Constructors' Championship was, was because if, if they still had Daniel Ricciardo, they would have got more points and they would have come second. That fucking prick finally admits Daniel was good. that Daniel was awesome. After all the shit that he put on him and all the bullshit like, oh, well, we've never had a better driver than, than Verstappen, he now realises that the best driver, the only driver on the grid that can fucking hold a candle to Verstappen was Daniel Ricciardo and let him go. Oh, well, there you go. Fuck you. Yep. So I think Red Bull are going to be a force to, rep, be, to be reckoned with. Then you go down to McLaren. I, I think, think they'll have another great year. I think they'll be having a cracker year. I really do. You know what? They'll be the best of the rest. Very close link to Red I Bull. I mean, it's a it's a happy looking team. Like I was watching some videos during yep. the week, and the team looks. I like I like that Andrea Seidel. I like the way he, he conducts the team. I like that that team has got a lot of money. It's, it's got, got oil money, and it's got the best facility. One of the best facilities That's around. Still one of the greatest places. How ever, good does that it? headquarters look? Did What's you his s- name? Um. What's his name? Lando was riding a push bike around yes. the other day and he was filming it. Yes. Did you it's see just, the, the fog come off the water? Yeah. It looks amazing in that place. I th- and, and again, they've got nothing to lose that team because they're not expecting to win championships or races. But you know what? They might just well win a few races this year. And they certainly might get podiums. But they've got two great drivers. Lando Norris is awesome. I his think first year. Rookie of the year, it. man. We, we said that last year. Yep. Rookie of the year. And... Uh, Carlos Sainz Jr. is fucking underrated. Criminally oh, underrated. He's, he showed himself yeah. last year. That's why if he went to Ferrari, I wouldn't question it. No. I wouldn't question it. I'd be like, you know what? He deserves to go to Ferrari, that bloke. He really does. I don't see why he wouldn't. Oh, if he had the but opportunity. you know what? I don't think he'll move now. I think he'll stay. But because you know why? Because next year they get Mercedes engines again. Mm. So they got one more re- year of Renault engines and, pay- and potentially saying, oh, well, we could do better if we had, you know... I see, that was the thing they Mercedes did this year really well. They didn't whinge about the engine. No, they, they didn't. They just no. got down there and no. they just did it. Well, because Renault threw them a lifeline. At the end of the day, no one was able to give them a, an, another engine except for Renault. And they, they took the Renault engine and they said, okay, well, it didn't let them down, actually. I don't think it let them down. They no, never the had Renault a, engine's apparently quite good. They rec- Actually, the rumour is the Renault engines found more than any other team. Well, at one stage there last year, they were supposedly the most yeah. powerful motor. They yeah, were the more Renault engine, the Mercedes, and the Ferrari. Yeah. And I tell you, the Renault car was not unreliable. It just wasn't a good car. It just did. And there was they knew the chassis. Yeah, the hence, chassis. Hence why the chassis engineer is gone. Yeah. Well, that's what worries me. So the, the the chassis is designed by that chassis engineer. Going back to my point. Yeah. But I think McLaren will be great this year. Um, who we th- who we got after that? We got like uh, Haas. We've already discussed. Haas. I think that'll be another interesting year. You know what? Haas could have easily beat Renault many times last year if they could turn their tyres on. Yes. So Haas, I think, are a dark horse in terms of the midfield. Um, you know what? This year, I'm Gunter Steiner. You've got to be fucking serious. I'm I'm telling you now. You know why? Because if he doesn't get rid of fucking this is Roman Roman Grosjean's last year. I'm telling you now. It is because. And Kevin Magnussen, potentially he's last year too, right? Because oh, they're talking big things for Magnussen. There was well, some, one of the videos I was watching the other night was talking about him going to red. I'm like, there's no, no way, no he's going fucking to red. way. He was in McLaren and he didn't stay there. No way. K Mag's good, right? But K Mag's days at the top end are done, gone, right? But Roman Roman Grosjean, I'm sorry, that that chucklehead's got to go this year. I cannot believe that they left those two fucking chuckleheads together for another year. And they bitched about them fucking, what, for two seasons now, about banging it into each other, not playing it with team orders and all this shit. And Grosjean they, wanting to drive the current car. Give me the old car. This one's shit. Yeah, and complaining. You know, Grosjean was the guy that said, oh, this is the worst experience. of. This is during a race. Yes. This is the worst experience I've ever had. I can't believe how bad this car is. I can't wait to finish this race. Fuck this car. And then Gunter Steiner got on the radio and said, well, it wasn't pleasant for you, for the uh, the pit crew that stayed up to 2, 3 in the morning fixing the car that you put in the wall during practice. You fucking chucklehead. Yeah, fuck. And they kept, they kept the guy on for another year. I couldn't yeah, believe it. they that. had Hulkenberg sitting there. They had Hulkenberg sitting there. I couldn't believe it. Right? Do you think Hulkenberg's ever going to come back? I, I don't think so. I'd like to. I mean, there's rumours running around that he'll take a house seat next year. I hope he does. It'd I hope he does. Yeah, I hope he does because I like Hulkenberg. He was a good driver. Yeah. Well, you know what? Going back to my point with Renault, sorry. 
for Daniel Ricciardo, he's got a big test because he's got Ocon this year. And I, I, Ocon's, I think he's going to take Ocon. He'll do, he'll do good. He'll do good, man. Trust me. Ocon, but it'll take him a couple of races. Yes, he's, it will. He's out of race form. Yes, he is. But by mid-season, I think Ocon could be a force to be reckoned with for Daniel. He's going to have to watch him. And look, if it's anything, go by fucking Formula One 2018 on Xbox. He's a prick of a driver. He's a, <laughs> he's a cock. Yeah, so um, Haas, we, more of the same for Haas. Uh, and actually, I think I saw Autosport say that this is an important year for them because if if they don't improve from where they were last year and get more up the pecking order in terms of the midfield, there's a thought that Gene Haas is questioning his his role in Formula One. I don't. I don't. That's what the Autosport look, having because uh, I like my American motorsport. Gene Haas isn't too shabby. He's quite good. He he. I mean, his NASCAR team wasn't the top NASCAR team for a few years there, and he stuck with it. So I, I, I see him sticking with it. It's a good industry. It, Haas machinery, That's he's pitching it to the right market. Yeah. You know, yeah, I well think that's a lot of things on the side of Formula One car. Yeah. You know, we were saying, why isn't Pepsi sponsored? Well, I think I don't think that's the market Pepsi's no. looking for. Well, again, he's been very upfront that he's not chasing sponsors. He wants his name yes. and his automotive yeah. tools to be front and centre. Yeah. Yeah. So, And you look at NASCAR. Yeah, Pepsi's all over NASCAR, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mountain Dew, and all that because yeah. that's the demographic they're yeah. aiming for. You yeah, know? I think you know you you look at the Formula One world; it's it's a higher. I mean, other than us bums who watch it, generally yeah. they're aiming for a high demographic. Yeah. So they they're going to be interesting. The other big interesting team will be Force India slash Racing Point. So at the point of Aston this Martin. recording, they have just bought a sixteen point seven percent stake in Aston Martin. They have yeah. announced it has already been ratified for twenty twenty one. Yeah. They they haven't announced how it will work, but they will be they're, they're Aston, Aston Martin Racing. Yeah, Aston York. Martin Racing. So, but, so that means they're going to have to drop their main sponsor because the pink is the purser, isn't it, presser? Uh, that's the filtered water company. Yes, that um, is their colour. My understanding, yes it is, but my understanding is, is that they may still well be a sponsor, but the livery is going to be very interesting because they will want to probably use the Aston Martin. Is it... Green British racing green, right? It's racing green. So uh, traditionally, their colours are silver or British racing green. British racing green is more Jaguar, but Aston Martin and I mean anyone who knows cars knows that Aston Martin and Jaguar were hand in hand yeah. for many many years. Yeah, know? they probably would use silver, except Mercedes have taken that. Um, I think that they will use British racing green, which I love personally. Well, the, j- the Jags. Speaking about liveries at the start of the podcast, Jaguar. I oh, love that livery. Oh looks- fuck. What a car! It looked really. It was aw- it was a dog, but God, it looked awesome. <laughs> Didn't that car look pretty? Yes, it did. Oh, what a car! But um, HSBC wasn't it? HSBC, yeah, yeah. Mark Webber drove for Jaguar, your favourite driver, and uh, I bit my teeth. Adrian Sutil. I think drove as his teammate. I think, I think Adrian Sutil, who would be Red Bull, a Red Bull Academy driver. Yes. Drove for was, him at some it? point. Yeah. Oh, he was a teammate at some point. Yeah. Um, but at the end, oh, that's the other nice car that was pretty as well, was the Stuart Ford. The 1999 Stuart, uh, Stuart Ford. Ford with a beautiful tartan. Yeah, the, uh, the white, white and tartan. White and, tartan. and the big giant Ford Oval on the side of the uh, engine bay. Yep. Look, you look beautiful. But going back to Racing Point, yeah, big year for them. And you know what? I tell you now, they're going to be a fucking force to be reckoned with. Because if they're going to be a works manufacturer now, I don't see them wanting to be just... Midfield like they are now, they're going to be looking for podiums. With the amount of money at some point, the amount of money Strolls invested over the last yeah. couple of oh, years, mate, that got. You know what? I didn't know much about Lawrence Stroll, father of Lance Stroll, the driver. I didn't know that. I didn't know much about Lawrence Stroll at no. all. And then he came on the scene, obviously, because his son got a drive, a paid drive with Williams. And then uh, he started throwing away, throwing a, his money around. And then before you know it, he's bought a team, which is Racing Point. Right. And then he says, well, I'm going to buy a 16, what is it, 16.1%? 16.7% of Aston Martin, which has cost him in Australian dollars $326 Are million. You fucking dollars, serious now? Um, with a promise of another investment within to Aston Martin of $300 million. Are you serious? So now? that's a 300, 600 and something million dollars that's cost him. And you know who hates him? Red Bull. Because that's their title sponsor. Yes. Well, no, Red Bull have come out and said they're not too unannoyed. They've done... They've really enjoyed working with yeah, Aston but they, Martin. Yeah, but they lose that money. Oh, yeah, they lose that, yeah. that big that's, money. That's what I'm saying. That was big money. That was See, do you remember not too long ago, 
Aston Martin became prominent on the Red Bull cars because that was their title sponsor, and there was big rumours that Aston Martin might be, become an engine supplier for Red Bull to get them out of Renault. Because yes. remember, they were falling out of love with Renault. Yep. They were looking for an engine partner. Honda weren't yet on the scene, and the rumour was Aston Martin... Ferrari told them to fuck off. Ferrari told them to fuck off. Mercedes told them to fuck off. And one point, I think Martin Brundle made a funny comment that... Well, they'd be like the Flintstones and just stick their foot underneath the, the floor. And, and then and Dr. Helmut was coming out going, well, if no one wants to give us a motor, why are we bothering? Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah, well, Dr. Helmut said, fuck this sport. Yeah. Remember that? And so the, the, the potential lifeline was going to be Aston Martin, who are the title sponsor. And Aston said, Aston Martin was saying, well, we don't really have the technology. and All the cash. All the cash. And then uh, before you know it, Lawrence Stroll's come along and said, oh, well, I'll buy a big part of you 16.7 percent which automatically makes him the chairman of the board he's a chairman of the board now and the highest investor yeah and investor. and now they're a works manufacturer now the question i asked you ages ago and i don't think anyone's answered it is how are they going to solve their engine supply problem that because means. i doubt they'd be using mercedes engines moving into the future because they use mercedes now for racing point are they they wouldn't use i don't I, look i think at the will moment, they rebrand them or something like they're gonna they can't be Aston Martin uh, racing Mercedes, I would have thought they'd want to get rid of all that shit. They'd want to be Aston Martin. They'll just do what McLaren does. They just don't mention Mercedes. Same as Williams. They don't really talk about Mercedes. Uh, yes, it's there, but it's not, you know, it's not prominent. I, I think you can't, they can't build a motor this year. No, they can't, no. They're going to have to, but the thing is you're going to have to try because you're not going to be able to build it next year or the year after because your budget cap comes in. So they're going to have to build as much of the motor as they can this year without their budget caps. Uh, yeah. So the long-term solution for them will be to build their own engine. Yes. Because the problem's going to be the budget caps. Yeah, it will be. Because I can't see them being a works manufacturer, being tied to having a, being a customer. But in saying so. that, I mean, uh, what's the Valkyrie? The, so the, the Aston Martin Valkyrie, isn't that running a Mercedes motor? I don't know. So that's the know. one that that's the Red Bull slash Aston Martin car they've made. Right. Have you seen that thing? No, I haven't. No. Oh, remind me to show you. Okay. Afterwards. I'm sure there's a, a workaround, but what I'm saying is, as a works, it doesn't ma- sound right. It doesn't yes. sound right. As a works manufacturer, you tend to build your own engine and your own chassis, and you go play with the big the big F1 boys, right? Yep. And so I don't see how they can possibly. Uh, call themselves a works manufacturer when they've got a Mercedes engine bolted to the back, unless they do what Renault did in the olden days, back in the late 90s, when they left Formula One and they called it a Mechachrome. Remember that? Yep. And then, and then Porsche did it with tag. Exactly right. So they might do something like that. Instead of saying it's a Mercedes engine, they might call it a such-and-such such engine, but it's actually a branded, uh, you know, uh, Aston Martin branded type engine but it's really not it's really a mercedes engine at its core be interesting to see if mercedes had let something like that happen i don't think they will no. i think mercedes will say go fuck yourself and they'll give that engine they'll either uh absorb the cost of not having another customer engine or they'll offload that engine to somebody else that might want well they, you know what they already have they've given it to mclaren there yes, you go there there's you your go. problem so solved there, yeah so i can see it happening i can see mercedes saying well we don't want to give because they're going to have in 20 21 at the time of this recording they're going to have force india i oh, said sorry racing point now aston martin they're going to have mclaren williams. williams and their own team that's four is, is there anyone else or i left somebody off no that's all cars is ferrari cars is ferrari renault's, renault's renault, renault. um ferrari's like. ferrari mclaren's going to be a mercedes uh, williams will be mercedes well, they've, yeah, they've already secured their yeah. team. Yeah, oh, they're, they're a feeder team now. They're locked in, basically. <laughs> I hate. I know you hate saying it, but that's how... Mis- but see, Williams, to survive as, a, as an independent constructor, have to tie themselves to a manufacturer in some way, and that manufacturer is Mercedes. And so... Well, they always have. And so they've Mercedes, never had their own motors. No, so. they, they're exactly right. They've never had their own motors. But, they, but see, their business model has changed. Yes, substantially. Substantially. So in the 90s... Being an independent constructor made sense. Now it's it gets swings and roundabouts. Now it's the works manufacturers want to come in and play. But you know what? They're all going to go fuck this sport at some point and they're all going to withdraw. The very fact that you're hearing the rumor of Mercedes pulling out, which they've, which they've said they're not, but the very fact that you're hearing it says at some point they're going to. 
At yes. some point, they're going to say, fuck this sport, right? And it's going to be when the rules and regulations don't suit them anymore or the board says... <laughs> they're going to do a Ferrari. They're going to do a Ferrari. Or the, or the board says, oh, we don't want to spend that much money anymore or guess what, we don't win anymore, fuck this sport. That's what's going to happen, right? So and that's why having uh, every single team as being a manufacturer, a works manufacturer is dangerous because these guys just pull up stumps whenever you feel like. But a guy like Frank Williams... As an independent constructor, he's invested in the sport. He ain't going to go anywhere, no. right? Like Eddie Jordan, basically, he sta- he stayed to the end, didn't he? And then he got bought out by... Who did he buy? Stuart. Stuart. Yeah, Stuart bought him out, didn't he? Yeah. Or Ford, yeah. Ford bought him out, yeah. But um, see, at the end of the day, I, I don't like having just works manufacturers. I think it's dangerous. No, you got to have independent guys. I think you do too, yeah. And, you know. But anyway, get, moving down the list. So we... we Racing Point are going to be very interesting. But you know what I said to you? Oh, it's fucking it's so bright. And I fucking hate it. I know exactly what you're You know what I'm going to say, don't you? He's a fucking lucky prick. He's a lucky prick. So the guy that's going to always have a great seat in Formula One is Lance Stroll. Because Lance Stroll is the son of Lawrence Stroll, who's just bought a big majority sh- uh, share of Aston Martin, which will now be the works team. And Lance Stroll's going to have a seat in a works manufacturer and benefit from all of that. And he may well, he may well get a, waste, a race winning car at some point. That's fucking wrong. He can get a, a race winning car, but he couldn't drive to win it. But he will. He could get a car that a monkey could fucking win in. Do you know what I mean? And a guy like Daniel Ricciardo. FW18, wasn't he? Yeah, that was the uh, – who was quoted as that? Someone said that the FW18, a monkey could win in it, right? So he may well get a car like that. And a guy like Daniel Ricciardo, who's got natural talent but no money, no one's backing that guy. He did it all on his own back, yep. right? And I guess the Red Bull Academy saved him, gave him a lifeline. But he could end up with no seat. That would be fucking tragic. That, that could happen. Right. It, but it's it's something that happens in it Formula happens one. so there's so many exa- we so could do many a, examples we could do a podcast on that actually the drivers that were awesome but got fucked yeah, right because they didn't have the money because they didn't have the money and they got bad luck and they get they were at the wrong place at the wrong time Heinz Harold Fenson we talked about that ages ago he was a great guy oh, look, you know there's a famous great photo, driver there's a famous no Aussie photo and it's Mark Webber Craig Lowndes. Um, Jason Bug won a whole heap of Aussie V8 supercar guys before they were Aussie V8 supercar guys at uh, an F2 race in Europe. They were all competing in. Yeah. Craig Lowndes, Jason Bargwana flogged Mark Webber. Yeah. Flogged him, but didn't have the Telstra money or the Mark Webber money. Yeah. And were going around race to race, dredging up money. Yeah. The two guys who were much quicker got screwed, had to come back to Australia. Yeah. And then we know. Somebody else got to drive. Yeah. Didn't actually get any championships, which makes me... Well, the only happy. thing about that guy is, and I know this, is that he didn't get any really major sponsorship. He had Yellow Pages. Telstra. He had Telstra. Which was more than anyone else. Which was more than any of the other... If you actually look at the photo, yes. you'll see everyone standing there in their overalls. Yes. Clean. Yeah. And but, he's got... Da, 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 yeah, da, da, but he was the only one... But that's not a lot compared to European drivers. No. Right, but what I'm saying is, yeah, you're right. The other guys got screwed. He had less than European drivers. He went to Europe and raced over there. And compared to the European drivers, he had fuck all money. Marcus Ambrose was there as well. Marcus Ambrose did. Yes, he did test. Yes, he did. Yeah. And actually, of all of them, Marcus Ambrose was probably the most talented. He was the guy that should have got the seat in Formula One. Right. Him and Craig Lowndes, I reckon. I'm not a big Lounsey fan. Top bloke. Have met him a couple of times. Really nice bloke. But, I yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think Ambrose is the one that people talk of as about as being the guy that should have been in Formula One. Uh, but had he, to, he basically had to come back to Australia because his dad ran out of money. So his yeah. dad had his own company that was supporting him. Yeah. His dad ran out of money. He's like, I can't afford to support you over there. You need to come yeah. back. And uh, the money. only reason why Daniel Ricciardo, I think, is in Formula One is because of Red Bull. Because he got into that academy. Yes. That was the lifeline for him. It's right? so funny. You look at um, Alex Albon, who was in the Red Bull Academy, got kicked out of the Red got Bull Academy, it, yeah. and is now driving for Red Bull. Yeah. you know. Well, he's a guy that got kicked up the ass by Dr. Helmut Marco quite a bit, but I think... And kicked out of the team by Dr. Helmut Marco. Yeah, but I think Dr. Helmut Marco understands a guy that's got a lot of talent, but maybe not the maturity. And if he suddenly gets some maturity and still has the talent, gets, an ex- gets another chance. It's fucking rare, though. Yes. Right? 
So he must be exceptionally talented for Dr. Helmut Marco to be like, you know what? You can be in, you can be our second driver, Alex. You know? Oh, they're all. He's I obviously mean, on look, quarter I'll of the never mo- deny anyone who makes it into Formula One has a talent. No, of course not. You but know? he must be on quarter of the money as Verstappen. Oh, if a, that. A poof yeah. You know, like Verstappen's on ridiculous. Well, we know that Daniel Ricciardo was on a lot less money. 49 than, million. But he was on less money than Verstappen, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. Well, we know we know um, Lewis is on fifty five, yep, and asking for sixty six. He'll, he'll get that. They reckon he will, although there was talk that he won't because they reckon that's out of Mercedes' budget. But they've just signed some twenty six million dollar advertising agreement with somebody. I can't remember who it was. So I think he'll get his. Do you think? 10. Do you think it's even possible that he goes to Ferrari? No. Nah. I don't think so now. I don't think... Not now. I think, you know what, the rumours towards the end of the season last year were really fresh and buzzing around and it was believable, but it's gone dead quiet now. I think he's going to stay. He, yeah. I think he's going to do his time at Mercedes. He's, he's got a legacy. Yeah. You know, and that's is that a legacy you want to yeah. shit on? I mean, and, we've and he, seen great drivers recently come back with amazing legacies and their legacy's now been tainted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's also said that he started his career in a Mercedes engine with a Mercedes engine car and he's going to finish his in- he's still using a Mercedes. He's never used any other car with, with that hasn't had a Mercedes engine in it. So and that's this, this is a kid who t- walked up to Ron Dennis at a go-kart track and said one day I'll drive. I'll drive for you. I mean, he's got more chance of going back to McLaren and, and when it goes to Mercedes again than he does going to Ferrari I think now, but I think he's going to stay at Mercedes. And the only reason why he'll retire is if he doesn't like these new cars. Or he's, or he's getting beat. Or, or he's vegan. Or he, burger shop takes Oh, off. he doesn't look like he's vegan. Oh, he he's looks, vegan. Is he? He's massive vegan. He he's looks just f- started a vegan hamburger chain is in he? England. He looks fucking ripped as shit, though. Yeah, it's because he's starving himself because he's vegan. Yeah. How do you know a vegan? They'll tell you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, it just gets me every time. So where are we up to? We're up to Racing Point. We've done Racing Point. We've done the midfield. Renault, we've talked about Renault. Alfa we? Romeo. Alfa Romeo will be more of the same. Kimi, more of the same. I, Kimi, think, I think Kimi will be out at year, the end of the year. Last year, man. That breaks my heart, but I think you can't expect a guy. You know what? It'll be 20 years if he does 2021. 20, He'll be up there with Rubens. One of the longest drivers. Uh, Ricardo Patrese, I think. Did, uh, Rubens beat Ricardo Patrese, who was the second most... Uh, had the second highest drivers of Formula One, and I think what a great guy he was, Ricardo Patrese. He was an awesome driver for Williams. Yeah, yeah, he was a fucking, he was a rock. Have you watched that doco I told you about? Which one? The Williams one. Yeah, I started to. Okay. Yeah, I, Drive to Survive season two is on now, isn't 28th it? Twenty eighth of this month. The twenty eighth is it? Ah, awesome. I know. That'll be interesting because we'll have the behind the scenes with uh, Renault at. With Daniel Ricciardo, that'll be interesting. The big question everyone's asking, of course, is what will happen to the Mercedes episode? Oh, that'll be interesting. Because you know about that episode, don't you? No, what happened with that episode? Uh, So you remember, uh, which track was it where Hamilton was sick this year? Oh, what was that track? Um, He was sick, he wasn't feeling well, he had a really bad weekend. Yeah. And it happened to be the weekend, the drive to survive was in the Mercedes pits. So apparently there's been, uh, there was a question... Requested from Mercedes not to show that episode. What was that episode? I can't remember that. Was it Barcelona? Uh, it was very early on in the season. That's why I can't remember it. So I'm going to say, yeah, it was very near the start of the European yeah. season. It was in the European season. I think so, yeah. Yeah, no, I think be it may have been Barcelona from memory. Yeah. So he had a really bad weekend and apparently it was quite stroppy. And they had the drugs. Oh, yeah, cameras. that's what shits me about. See, that guy, I would idolise that guy. And I think a lot of people, a lot more people would if he just wasn't so fucking stroppy. He wasn't such a dick. Yeah, that's all it is, man. Because I'm sure he, <laughs> I actually, I'm actually going to be honest with you. I actually think he's probably he's a nice guy. Well, I think he just comes you across look at him as a the bit way of a, back in the McLaren days. He seemed like yeah. a young, fun yes, little kid. He I mean, did. He got done in Melbourne doing burnouts in the street. Yeah, but you, you know, know what? When he started hanging out with that pussycat doll, that's when it all went downhill. Cornrows. When he started hanging out with her, she bec- he changed. He changed. I, I'm sure of it. <laughs> but anyway, going back, so Alfa Romeo, more of the same. More I think same. this is unfortunately Kimmy's last year. I can't unless he's got the taste of wanting to see what these new cars are like next year. I, but I think he'll get forced out. 
I think he's going to get forced out because. Well, the other why? rumor is they don't reckon Alpha will be around next year. They won't be. Mm. So who's going to replace Alpha? They reckon somebody else will buy the team because Alpha's not seeing the the return they were expecting on it. Yeah, but they're owned by Fiat, and Fiat are owned by Ferrari. Ferrari so well, Ferrari, Fiat owned Ferrari. Yeah, exactly. So why, who, why would Fiat give them up? Because they're a good feeder team for Ferrari. Oh, if you want, feeder team. if you want Mick Schumacher to get a taste of Formula One, stick him in an Alfa Romeo, and if he does damage in the back, who cares? Yep. He doesn't cost you a championship. When you're in a Ferrari, you're playing for championships. Yep. You're not playing for like you're not playing with the, the kids. No, you're not. You, you, you know, even if a sh- if a, even if a Ferrari shit, you know it's going to win a, a race or two. Right, that's the thing. Even about if it's top end shit. cars, isn't it? Yeah, even if it's shit, you know you're going to get points every weekend. You know you're going to get podiums unless I'm driving it. Unless yeah, unless you're driving it or fucking supermodels driving it, and he's had a sandwich or two. But the <laughs> point is, is that you know in a, in the real world, the Ferrari should be winning races, even if it's shit. Yeah, right. You don't you don't stick Sh- Mick Schumacher in there. I'm sorry, I don't no. care if he's got a Schumacher name. No, or you not. still you still go to Alpha. Like, that's right. Same as Leclerc did. You do your year or two in Alpha. That's right. I think that's a problem with. Uh, but this Giovinazzi. Giovinazzi, yeah. yeah. I don't see Giovinazzi no. up there. I just don't. I just. I don't think he's got the skills, and I tell you what, I don't think he's got the temperament. I think he'll break. I think Ferrari will kill him. Yeah, yeah, pretty I, much. You know, like, the press for Ferrari is probably yeah. out. Of and hand. that's why I actually do think, unfortunately, as much as you and I want it, I don't see Daniel go on there. I just see him going to McLaren. I just think McLaren... Um, look, I'm not unhappy with him going to McLaren. No, I'm not either. But I just think Ferrari, the the board, will say he's a bit too much of a joker, a bit too much of a prankster. Oh, you've got to be very... You've got to be very serious. He's not the type of person we want, you know, representing our brand. Sorry, uh, we'll get this uh, Spaniard in. He's a bit more serious. Carlos Sainz Jr. And he's very talented and he's a lot younger and we'll put him in the car. You know? I think that's what's going to happen. I hate saying that. I hope I'm fucking wrong. Oh, look, either way, I'll be happy to see him go. I mean, yeah. I'll not go, but either either team, I'm happy with him going yeah, to. McLaren's way. another one of those teams, you know. They're, they're up there with Williams and Ferrari for yeah. me. Yeah, they're, they're, they're one of those ones that have been around forever. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. They've, so gone be, they've gone through controversy. <laughs> Contro- oh, like yeah, we'll get to that in a sec. Oh. But, but so, yeah, Alfa Romeo, um, more of the same. I don't see. They may knock on. I tell you what, if Renault is really shit, and they were last year, there were times when Alfa Romeo were knocking on their door. Oh, but you look at Melbourne. Everyone thought, "Wow, where's Alfa? What the hell? Alfa Romeo is going to have a brilliant year." And that you know what? It. They're the type of team during winter testing that look amazing, and everyone's like, "Oh, remember they had that that really cool wing, that wing design at the oh, start yeah. of last year?" And everyone's like, "Alfa Romeo have found something no one else has." And I went, "Yeah, but they're owned by fucking Fiat." who own Ferrari, wouldn't Ferrari know about that wing? I'm sure they whisper. There's no way Ferrari haven't seen that wing and said, ours, well, is, ours is not better. You know what I mean? Where's like, wind tunnel? Uh, isn't that the same place where... It's, it's it's the same wind tunnel as Ferrari, isn't it? Well, there you go. So Ferrari have seen it. Of course they've same seen it. Same as Haas. Haas's wind it, tunnel is Ferrari. That's right, but it's, they give them their, all the old shit. Or the new shit that they're not convinced works and see if it works and then they put it on their own car. For yeah, sure. It works so better. Ferrari, okay, cool. Ferrari have got literally two teams that are testing for them 24-7. Yep. Right? They've got Alfa Romeo and they've got Haas. Yes. Ferrari are in a, such an amazing position. It's unbelievable. Plus, they've got two customer teams testing their engine. So, their engine is going to be amazing. Right? I think Ferrari are very close to a championship. Uh, I'd, I'd say I think it's close, man. I think this is the year for them. I do. If we, I tell you, there's no change in regulation. If Vettel can get his shit together, Leclerc's got a bit more seasoning. I think this year they could be a lot closer to Mercedes. Be, testing should be interesting at the yeah, end. Yeah, I think Mercedes will still beat them. I think Hamilton will still be the champion, but I think Ferrari will be closer. That's my, my that's my prediction. They grab the constructors. They may. They could do sh- shit like that because Bottas is a bit of the weak link. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and if he doesn't get as many points as, as the others, well, then, of course, they'll, they'll get the constructors. Ferrari will. Yep. And so you're left with Williams at the back. You know what? I'm calling it now. Williams will be a lot better this year. A fucking lot better. Well, they've already fired the motor up. They shared the video, was it not last night, the night before? They did the, the you know, the... The top secret, everybody's yeah. coming to the workshop and we fired the motor up and it looks good. Um, I, th- I think they'll languish at the back still. I don't. I just don't think they'll be as bad. 
No, I think they would have caught up. I mean, you. Could, I sat down the other week because you know, apparently I've got nothing better to do. Was looking at their times throughout the course of the year compared to everyone else, and they did catch up. Oh, they did. Yeah, they caught up significantly. You know, they caught up over a second. Yeah, at, from where they were at the start of the season to where they finished. So. That's good signs. The thing is, the only problem is, I go back to what I was saying to you and Supermodel and yeah. and Nervous Nathan there when we play F1 on a Monday night. If I use Renault as an example, we know Renault were about two seconds a lap slower than a Mercedes. We know Mercedes will probably find a second and a half this year over the winter, maybe, I'm guessing. That means you've got to find at least three seconds over the winter to be anywhere near where they were last year. Yes. Maybe you've got to find four seconds. Well, yeah, because you've, you've still got to find that second back right. to Renault I'll, I'll, and then the time that's from right. Renault there. So I'm pulling that out of my ass. I'm, I mean, these are not exact numbers. So Williams probably have to find something like six fucking seconds. Yes. That's a lot, man. It's <laughs> that's a lot in Formula One. But I do think they'll be a, a lot more competitive. I'll tell you why. Because they've got a, a potentially stronger driver lineup. They've got George Russell, who is awesome. And, champion. and Nicholas Latifi, I think, is going to be stronger than... And than Latifi, Pratt. I didn't realise he won't be at Williams for long, will he? No, he's a rich boy. He's a rich boy. Daddy owns 10% of McLaren. Yeah. Daddy owns 10% of McLaren. And uh, is it Latifi linked to a food company? Yes. It's him, isn't it? Yep. His parents own... Oh, yeah, his parents own some massive food chain yeah. in Canada. In Canada, yeah. Of brands I've never heard yeah, of. Yeah, we don't have it out here. No. But um yeah, he's very wealthy, like extremely wealthy. Yeah. So he brings money to Williams. That's why it was a no brainer for them to get rid of Kibitza, because Kibitza was three seconds slower than George Russell. And sorry, Robert. Great that you came back to Formula One. Look, ten out of ten for ten out of back, ten. Man. Eleven After 12, what you went through. Fucking fifteen out of ten for coming back. Twenty out of ten. Awesome. But I'm sorry, you can't be three seconds a lap slower than your teammate in a shit car. And your teammate's first year in an F1 And your teammate's car. first year in F1, right? So I think Latifi may not be as good as George Russell. I'm guaranteeing he's going to put it in the wall a couple of times in Melbourne, right? Because I don't think he's that experienced and he's clearly a paid driver. But he's probably going to be better than Kibitza. And maybe the car's going to be at the back of the midfield this year instead of being back of the back of the back, yes. right? So I think they probably will be back in the midfield. They may get a lot more. They'll get way more point, a lot more points than they got last year. Um, they might get consistent points, but they'll be at the back of those points. I That's was reading I an think. interesting article from Braun saying that you know the sport needs Williams to do better. Oh fuck yeah, we can't have Williams languishing no. in the back. It does. It's not no. good for the sport. No, it's not good. Th- these are iconic teams like McLaren as well. Like. Think about the last five years or so. We've had iconic teams like McLaren and Williams languishing. Yep. That's unacceptable. You need teams like that because most of the hardcore fans of the sport, like you and I, want to either follow Williams or they follow McLaren, right? They don't necessarily give a shit about Mercedes, right? Everyone follows a Ferrari. That's fine. But well, they're the only that's team it. that has been in every Formula One race ever. Ferrari, yeah, Ferrari. that's right. But but what? But actually, Alfa Romeo go back f- f- further than yeah, that. Yeah, but they go back further. They, they haven't been no, in right. every single race. That's right. Yeah, yeah. but um, the point is, is that McLaren and Mercy, um, McLaren and Williams are iconic constructors, independent constructors, and they're nowhere except McLaren. Are, Mc- McLaren, are they're coming back. back. But you but can't remember. It's a, it's a cycle. Yes, Formula One has always been a cycle where a team will, who's at the top will languish for a couple of yeah, years, yeah, you know, because yeah. other teams catch up and find innovations. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, when they're winning, they're starting to get lazy and not yeah, lazy, yeah. but, you know. I think, look, at the end of the day, I think what we want this year more than anything, and I think what everyone universally wants. I want to see them not as the last two on the grid every fucking That's race. right. But I, I think everybody wants that. But they really, really want a change of the guard. They want they want someone to beat Mercedes. It's just we don't even care who it is that anymore. We don't care who it is. It could be anybody now. We don't give see, a I shit. Mean, I don't. I fucking want someone look, to win. Yeah, I know, other than them, I know that. But I mean, we ha- we see this happen all the time. You look at Ferrari, ninety nine to what two thousand and six. Yeah, untouchable, untouchable. Yeah, Williams ninety one to ninety eight, ninety eight, yep. untouchable. Yep. You know, yep. McLaren, early 80s, untouchable. Yeah, they had a spell in the late 90s. They had 90, 90, 98, and then they had to 2000. So they were two years where they were dominant. Yep. Um, 
and then yeah, the Ferrari years of the of the early two thousands to the mid two thousands. Then you had Renault for two years. Then you had uh, the late two thousands was uh, I guess the building up of Red, Red Bull. Bull, and the early twenty tens was Red Bull. And then since twenty fourteen, it's, it's been Mercedes. Mercedes, and I think we're ready for a change now. Yeah, it's gonna, it's, you know, it's gonna, it, it's gonna happen. It's just a matter of this year. I don't see it happening unless Mercedes get it really wrong. And there's and no way get that, it really wrong. Well, they with that can't car. because there's no change of the bloody regulations. If the right. car was dominant last year, they'd have to go back to you know scrap, go back to the drawing board and scrap that and try something different. But they say that, but they won't. They'll they'll do, do an evolution of it. Yeah, they're they'll, German. Well, exactly, but they'll also do... They'll introduce new processes. Yeah. and they'll, they'll process, but they'll also say, well, that was a bit of a weak point in that, of the car. Well, so we all know, the weak, that. what was the weak point of the Mercedes? It's oh. a well-known fact. Uh, I would say it's straight line speed last year because the engine was definitely beaten by Honda and Ferrari last year. And their other problem was heating. And heating, yeah. They had yeah. a big problem with heating because they went with a Venturi effect which didn't work for them. So I think they'll change that out this year. They'll pop the guards out a little bit more. to get Yeah, the, the radiators will be them. bigger, yeah. Radiators will be slightly bigger. You know, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll less vacuum suck around the motor, give a bit more air around there. You know, I think they'll fix those little things that they know are their down yeah. points. It'll be interesting to see just how... Uh, it's a shame that we go into this season already knowing the result, at least in our minds. Yeah, because next year we'll be sitting here in 12 months' time, hopefully we're chatting like this again still, and we say, okay, let's talk about what we think will happen in the 2021 season, and you say, I've got no idea. Absolutely Because all the cars are different, and the deck's being completely shuffled, and the drivers are different. I can't wait. Yeah. And that's my only problem about 2020 going into this season, as excited as I am, like I said at the start of the podcast, uh, oh, look, I just by expect the end of, more by the end of this year, I'll be back to where I was last year. I hate fucking yeah, Formula yeah, 1. Well, Why the fuck yeah. do I do this? This is a well, stupid you, fucking you, sport. Because you, you know that they're going to throw all the silliness as well. Because oh. you know it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. It happens with every major regulation change. The first year, they'll put it out there. And then they'll say, oh, that didn't quite work. So they'll tweak it a little bit for 2022 or 2023. And then you'll say, okay, that works now. And then they'll come along and say... Yeah, but you know what? We have to really be more vigorous on this particular issue. And you're going to go, fuck you. And you know what that issue will be? The engines. The two-stroke engines. And you and I That's both... That's building momentum. Absolutely it is. But you and I were both dumbfounded that they kept these current engines for the 2021 regulations. Like, it fucking dawned on you now that you're still talking about this shit? Two-stroke engines for Formula One? Fucking kill me, right? Enzo Ferrari would be rolling over in his grave if he heard about two-stroke fucking engines. And the other cracker is by 2030, zero carbon emissions. I want to know how you measure that, Formula One. I want to know how you measure it. I, I watched... I was, what was What podcast was I listening to the other day? And they were talking about e, Formula E. Oh, yeah. And they went, oh, did you see this race? It was absolutely amazing. Santa Toga, I think it was. And I went... I'll give you a go because you know it's that sea. It's the off season yeah, so for all my nothing, mornings. I've got nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I've got I'm nothing. not watching cricket. Yeah. Fuck cricket. Yeah, fucking I, up at stupid boring ass. I'm I'm done with cricket in terms of the big bash. I don't like that. I don't like cricket. No, it bores the shit out of me. I like right. test cricket, but I don't. I don't like the big bash. But I don't have football. I've got no football at the moment. I've there's got no, no football. I've there's got, no nothing. There's nothing. Yeah, nothing. So I thought, you know what? I'll go back and I'll watch this race. I got about ten minutes. Yeah, I can't watch Formula. And it was e. like, oh, this this is so annoying. It's like a big thing of um, bumper cars. You know what? It's like they sound like uh, remote control cars. They look great. I like the but look. But watching of the... it, it was like bumper cars. Yeah, they just, boom, 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 they just boom, bash into each, each other. other. The, the, the circuits don't excite me either. The circuits are always road circuits, usually, and they're narrow, so they basically are conducive to crashes into the barriers and other cars and whatnot. So if things get broken all the time and. I just um, do they still on Formula E? I don't know. I haven't watched it for a long time. Do they still swap cars halfway through? No, not the, well. Actually, I didn't make it all the way through. So yeah, I don't know. know. They used to though. The start of Formula E used to make me laugh because well, they I used remember to come watching in one the where pits. they switched the battery pack in the pits. That was oh, ages that, ago. That might ch- oh, I don't know, but they used to they used to swap cars. They used to jump out of one car and go into another car because the battery was flat to make the race. And I used to think, well, that doesn't fucking make sense. Why would you do that? And their logic was it makes it more exciting. Uh, okay. I'm, 
I can see it in a way because, I mean, you look at the old Le Mans starts. How yeah. awesome was that, watching the guys run across the track, jump into their cars. Yeah. You know, and the tracks always look bumpy oh. on the Formula Re circuits. They're always bumpy. Like the cars are, I don't know if it's because of the 18-inch tyres in there. Although they've said that they've tested the 18-inch tyres on a Formula One car for the 2021 yeah, season. Yeah, Russell did it. And, the yeah. ty- and they're, saying, did it? they're saying the tyres and the suspension don't feel any, like, majorly different. No, it'll be less bouncy. They say anything. less bouncy, yeah. But on the Formula Re stuff, they're always bouncing. I don't know why, but they look like they're very bouncy, like sports cars. Yeah, I, I, and I just go, it just looks a bit amateurish. And I don't know, you know, I'm I'm a bit tainted because I know about Formula One too much, and a lot of the drivers are from Formula One. And I'm like, yeah, but you dropped out of Formula One because you couldn't cut it. That's yeah, my because you're too old. This is like uh, the retirement either, league. You're either too old or you just didn't cut it. Like Adrian Soudal, I think at one point was in form. It was in um, Formula what's his E. Name? What's his name popped up? Who's that dude who really annoys me that on our game? Sorokin. Oh, Sorokin's on there. Yeah, that's what I mean. All the has beens are there. Yeah. And I just think because you're a has been in Formula One, tells me straight away, I'm sorry, I know I'm a prick, but Formula E is like a second, second class, ring. second ring type uh, formula. I know I'm being a prick. No, no. But it's just how I feel with it, and I just can't, I just don't I tried. Like I gave yeah, I tried damn to. good. I, I tried mean, as recently, well. Recently, this year. Yeah. The cars, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, they the look cars cool. look cool. They look very cool, yeah. But again, they sound like a remote control car. Yeah. It's just like a glorified bumper car. Yeah. It was but you know what? I think, uh, I actually think that the proposed Formula 1 2021 cars look better than the Formula E cars do. Yeah. I think they look sick. I, that's what I'm saying. I can't wait for the next year. For the next year's season, like 2021 season, because I think we'll all be going, man, this is going to be sick. Roll on testing. That's roll on. Oh, fuck yeah. Roll on testing and roll on maybe. Uh, we might need to go to Melbourne, I think. Because I think I'll, we want to see it firsthand. I really think we might have to do that. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we'll talk have about swag, it. we'll travel. Have swag, we'll travel. We'll, we'll talk about it. Have raincoat if it rains. Oh God, you gotta, well, it is Melbourne. Oh, mate, I've got this sickest fucking waterproof jacket now. I wore it to uh, Cradle Mountain to Tasmania. Oh, it's sick. I just didn't have it. I had nothing but this jacket on and the water never affected me, man. Dry as a bone? No, it's a, it's a Kathmandu one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty sick. It would be. I felt like I was a hiker, but I really wasn't. Is it a puffy jacket? I've got a puffy jacket. I got that in New Zealand, actually. I got a puffy jacket in New Zealand, and the puffy jacket's awesome, actually. Like it's a nothing. You don't get uh, they cold are, at it, all. It's so funny it's, how prevalent they are in New Zealand. Everyone's got a puffy everyone's jacket. got a puffy jacket. They wear it down the street for everything. Whereas here, it's like, what are you doing with a puffy jacket? It's not that fucking cold. No, you never see puffy jackets here ever. No, Melbourne, you do. Tassie, you do. A Tassie, you see puffy jackets everywhere. But, it's but cold. I'll tell you something about Tassie. When I went down there a couple of weeks ago for this wedding. Dude, people are walking around in fucking freezing cold weather, like weather, like fifteen degree weather, in shorts and t shirt. And I'm like, you clearly, and we're all rugged up. Me and the Cookie Queen, we're all rugged up, and clearly we were the old ones out, you know. It was like, um, uh, what was that beach I went to in New Zealand? It was overcast. It was, you know, there was a light drizzle, which is New Zealand generally, yeah. and uh, it would have been maybe thirteen, fourteen degrees. Yeah. And I'd gone somewhere. I thought I'll pop into this beach have a look because everyone said oh you've got to see this beach and this rock and i went out and had a look it's the one where was that volcano that just erupted oh that's on the north island yeah yeah like but past auckland but wave i didn't make it that far yeah so it was that beach where you see that island so yeah and i went there it was like 12 degrees and i got out of the car oh god this is ridiculous yeah i went and bought myself a coffee walked over to the beach and went why are there people on the beach playing volleyball in bikinis yeah, it's and weird. speedos? It's, it's like, weird, man. Oh, it's 12 degrees. They, they actually think it's quite... I remember being there um, on Ramadi Beach on the North Island in October and it was like 15 degrees. Here it was like 30. And uh, everyone's like saying, oh, it's quite balmy. I'm like, fuck off. This is bullshit. You know, every day it was like this, like today. Yep. Like this. Yeah, right? yeah. No, Pissing I'd- down rain. Swirling wind, awful weather, and they're like, "Oh, it's yeah, it's normal, yeah." And Tasmania was the same. It was like this, actually, way colder than this. More rain, and the wind was unbelievable. And I asked the the owner of this Airbnb we were staying in, and she said, "Oh, yeah, this is quite normal for this time of year, and bit bit more wind that we normally would get 
you know, it's a bit un, unusual, the wind, but yeah, it's always windy and it's always cold and it's always, always it's ra- t- raining and it's, it's another fucking world down there, man. You know what? You know what I love about Tasmania? It's like the 1980s. It's the land that time forgot. I went back. To, it's like New Zealand and Tasmania are the same. Yep. They just, they just exist. And they, they, they just, they're separated from the rest of the world and they just go, you know what? And they're what? happy with that. And they fucking love it. They love it. They don't want to be part of the mainland. They don't want to be part of the rest of the world. Take me back to the 80s. And the 80s exist in Tasmania and New Zealand. Oh, fucking awesome places. Yes, very much so. Oh, Tasmania. I can see now why you love Tasmania. Why you, when you were working down there, I could see it. Oh, yeah. I just went, yeah, I could see why he likes it because it's like, it's everything at your fingertips still, but it's remote. Um, and it's just awesome. Oh, th- but I have to laugh, though. The amount of roadkill oh. is insane on the roads. Like, every couple of metres, there's, a, there's some dead animal. I remember going to a main town in Tassie, one of the main towns, and I put it in the GPS, and I'm driving along, and all it says, turn left. I'm like, oh, I don't see it. I'm on a main highway, the main highway that goes from Hobart to Launceston. Yeah, right. I'm on that highway, and it's like, turn left. I'm like, I'm not seeing a road. What the hell? And it was a dirt track. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, it's awesome. It I love good. it. Yeah. But you know the best bit was? We got, I'll just tell you this before we finish up. It's a cracking story, right? We get to um, we get to Devonport and uh, the cookie queen says, look, we've got a little bit to go to Barrington where the Airbnb is, but once we get there, there won't be anything open and we've got no food. So let's buy some food now. And we're looking for places. Everything's There's fucking shut, open. man. It was like four o'clock in the afternoon. Everything's shut. And we finally get to a service station thinking, oh, we'll find like milk and stuff. And we go there, nothing, dick, nada. I think there was milk maybe, but nothing really substantial. But the guy behind the counter had the best mullet I've seen in ages. And we both started laughing and he looked at us and we just said, oh, look, we're just admiring your mullet. How long have you had that? You know what he said? My whole life. <laughs> He was a fucking mullet. They have He's, some awesome bogans. Oh yeah, down there. Oh, the bo- but the best. Oh, the bogans are unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, there's so many bogans. But I mean, you want a Tasmanian joke? Ask a Tasmanian. They tell the best. Yeah, Tasmanian jokes. and they've got they've got time to tell a joke. Mm. They've got time. That's what I love. They they've got time to tell a joke and a good story. They're never in a rush. And if something goes wrong, oh well, say la vie. Yep. You know, I love whatever. It. Anyway. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. And that brings us to the end of another podcast, Rocket Russell. <laughs> roll on testing. Yes, roll on testing and come back, man, and we'll talk about testing yeah, we need results. To do a pre, pre-race testing results. We'll do a pre-Australian Grand Prix testing thing. Or you know what we could do? We could actually watch the Australian Grand Prix and do a live reaction to it. Do That's not a bad idea. Yeah, fucking oath. Do you want to? I'll do it. I'm up. Are you up for it? I'm up for it. All right, well, we could do a couple of things. We can do a pre-season uh, testing review like yep. what they what's happened what the liveries look like do we like them or don't we like them and then we could do a live reaction after the Australian Grand Prix I think we should do that Done. the Put only fuck up is I think the Grand Prix is on at 5 o'clock in the afternoon because it's a twilight race ah, again yeah. I hate that shit fucking Bernie fuck Eccleston Europe. oh fuck Europe exactly fuck right Europe. fuck them Brexit fuck oh, off get, get rid of let's you let's have a Melbourne exit uh, <laughs> mel exit mel exit mel, mel, mel exit <laughs> Well, well, we'll we'll discuss it. We'll we, discuss. we might we might might not do that, but we've got plenty of homework to do because we have got that other little topic we haven't yes. done yet. Yes, we need to book in. That's man. a big one. We yes. got to book that little fuck we didn't do. Yes, that's another little story. Thanks for coming in, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you for, as always, with your F one insight. Thank you for the two people that have been listening to this bullshit podcast. Thank you, Davil, and she's your garage. I'm sorry, I read about fucking Formula One. I don't know what. It's been fucking ages since Formula One. I think it was in November last year since we had our last race. Who knows what's going to happen this season? I'm fucking excited. I'm not as excited as I will be for 2021 when the regulations change. I know I'm going to get fucking disappointed. I know for some fucking reason there's going to be more bloody Mercedes dominance. And I know that Renault's going to piss me the fuck off. And Daniel Ricciardo's not going to get a fucking Ferrari suit. And that's going to fucking shit me. Because probably fucking Lance Stroll's going to get it. That little fucking prick. He's going to get the best fucking seats in Formula One. And you know what's going to happen? I bet he fucking gets a world title. And he fucking wins everything. Of course, his fucking daddy owns everything. Fucking Lawrence Stroll owns fucking everything. He owns everything. He won't fucking stop. He will never fucking stop. And next week, my fucking Formula One <laughs> champions will have some more retro in them and more bullshit. But until then, 
You can roll it, Mickey's. That was a good outro. <laughs> that was funny.